This video tutorial is brought to you by tipsquirrel.com. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and I've been talking to a lot of people lately who are new to the Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom for Photographers program. And if you haven't already checked that out, head over to adobe.com and look under the Photoshop product and find this plan here, $9.99 a month for Photoshop and Lightroom together. It's a great deal. And for those people who are new to this program, they're asking me, how can I use Photoshop and Lightroom more effectively together? So I'm going to cover that in a series of videos. We're going to start today by looking at editing multiple images from Lightroom in Photoshop. So I've got three images here that I took at the Florida Railroad Museum recently. And if we look a little more closely, we can see that I've got a regular exposed image, an underexposed, and an overexposed image. So a typical three bracket set taken with my Canon camera. Now I could combine these together using HDR software, but I want to go for a more naturally dramatic look. So I'm simply going to bring two of the images together and blend them in Photoshop, and I can do that right here from Lightroom. But before I head over to Photoshop, I'm going to make some adjustments to these images. So I'll select the first image and go into the Develop module. And here I want to accentuate the railroad cars and the trees. I'm going to disregard the sky, and I'm going to disregard the foreground. I want to focus on just getting as much detail in this area. So I'm going to bump up the exposure just a little bit on this one, maybe about right there, maybe 0.4. And then I'll take the highlights and bring those down. I'll bump up the shadows a little bit, just to open up some of the detail area in here under the railroad cars. And I think that's enough. I don't want to go any further. I've got the detail that I need here. So I'm going to switch over to my underexposed image. And here I want to make the sky look really good, and I want to make the foreground look really good. So I'm going to once again bump up the exposure just a little bit, maybe about right there. But I'll take the highlights back down because I want to preserve the sky and the clouds. And notice what happens when I adjust those highlights. Watch the sky. I'll drag the highlight slider down to minus 100, and we've got some great details in the clouds now. I've managed to darken this down quite a bit, so I'm actually going to take the white values and bring them back up a bit just to counteract what I've done and make sure I've got some good white highlights here in the clouds. That's pretty good. The clouds are looking good. The foreground is nicely exposed with detail, and I'm ready to combine the two images in Photoshop. So I'll go back to the grid view, and I'm going to highlight my two images. Once again, the normally exposed image and the underexposed image that we've just adjusted. And instead of editing them directly in Photoshop, I'm going to right-click on these images and choose Edit In. But rather than edit in Photoshop, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and open as layers in Photoshop. This is key, and it will bring both of these images into Photoshop and load them one on top of the other in the Layers panel. So it takes a moment, and here we have it. We have the regularly exposed layer here on the top, and if I hide this, we can see the underexposed layer below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask to completely hide this regularly exposed layer and reveal just the underexposed layer beneath. And the way I'm going to do that is by clicking here on the Add Layer Mask icon, but I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key down as I click. And that creates a black layer mask. Now with this layer mask selected, I'm going to choose the Brush Tool. I'm going to set my foreground color to white, and I'm going to set my opacity here to about 30%. And now I'm going to draw in white on the layer mask, and this will reveal the brighter layer. So here I'll just paint in some area here, maybe some over here, and I'm painting with a low opacity so I can repeat the brush strokes several times to build up density. So that's looking pretty dramatic right there. I can come up here in the trees as well and add some detail to the trees if I want it. Now if I don't like the way that looks, I can simply toggle my colors by clicking here or by pressing the X key. And now I've got black as the foreground color, and I can paint to remove some of what I've added here. I'm working strictly on the layer mask. Now if I hold the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac and click, we can see the layer mask. And this represents the areas where my layer is visible. I'll click on the regular layer, and here we have our finished image. Now if we want to bring this back into Lightroom, 
we can simply save and close the image. So I'm going to press Control S or Command S on a Mac and then I'll just close this image. And if we go back to Lightroom, here is my edited image now back in Lightroom. And in fact, we can even take this back into the develop module and work on it a little bit more. Maybe I might want to add some clarity, a little bit of vibrance to it. And there's my finished image. I've taken the regular exposure and the underexposure. I brought them into Photoshop, combined them together using Lightroom's Edit as Layers in Photoshop, and then re-imported the result back into Lightroom. So there you have it working with Photoshop and Lightroom together. In future videos, we'll continue to take a look at additional ways of using these two programs together to enhance your creative workflow. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography tips, tricks, and other information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.